You know, as I was about to fall asleep the other night, uh, I had a thought uh, about the coronavirus and economic substance regulations. I'm a dork, I know, it's horrible. But um, as many of you know, the economic substance regulations uh, have been implemented by countries throughout the world um, as a result of pressure from the EU uh, to get off the blacklist or, or, or not get listed on, on, on the blacklist to begin with. And essentially what the economic substance regulations are, so first of all, they're targeted at low and no tax jurisdictions, like the UAE here, here where I live. <coughs> and um, what the economic substance regulations essentially say is, you know, you can't come set up a company here in the UAE that has no employees, that has no presence, and then book all your income here uh, so that it's not taxed. If you want to operate a business here in, in, in the UAE and book that revenue here, you need to have a proportionate amount of substance here. That means your core income generating activities have to be here. You have to have sufficient assets and personnel and, and, and you know, an office and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, so, so these got implemented in 2019 here in the UAE. We got off the blacklist. Um, but a lot of what a, a lot of companies that are set up in, in, in the UAE uh, that fall under the economic substance regulations are holding companies, right? So there's a lot of holding companies here in the UAE uh, because it has a great treaty network, it has great laws, it's, it's a very attractive place to put a holding company. Um, and a holding company is considered a, a, a relevant activity for purposes of. Um, the economic substance regulations, which means um, it is covered by the economic substance regulations and it has to comply with the uh, economic substance regulations and meet an economic substance test. And so basically companies in the UAE each year have to notify um, the, the, the government whether or not they're engaged in a relevant activity. If they are, they have to describe how they meet the um, economic substance test because if they don't meet the economic substance test then it's possible that the UAE government would exchange this information with like the parent company of the UAE holding company or you know the, the, the countries of its shareholders or directors or, or whatever uh, and then those countries might you know investigate those people and say hey there's no economic substance with this company in the UAE and, and disregard it or you know disregard the treaty benefits or something anyway it wouldn't be good but that's not the point of this video the point of this video is to say that holding companies fa fall under the uh, economic substance regulations and they need to uh, meet the economic substance test in order for bad things not to happen okay and uh, so what's really required for a, a holding company? Well, first let's define a holding company. So a holding company uh, under the economic substance regulations uh, is a company whose primary purpose is to hold shares and equitable interests in other countries and does no other commercial, in other countries, in other companies and conduct no other commercial activity. So it basically owns shares and equitable interests in, in other companies. Um, if, if the company is in fact a holding company, it falls under, under the, the economic substance regulations, has to meet this economic substance test. But what's really required to run a holding company, right? Like what are its core income generating activities? It's basically collecting the money from uh, these shares and equitable interests that it owns, right? So like receiving dividends is pretty much its economic activity. There's, there's not a lot of decision making that goes into running a holding company, unless it's a very large holding company on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, you know, mostly, I mean, the only real activity is like voting the shares and, and a board meeting. And so the basic um, premise to this is, if you wanna make sure that you comply with the economic substance regulations at a bare minimum, assuming a, a small holding company that's basically just holding the assets throughout the year, um, and, and, and not selling them or acquiring new stuff and not really doing anything would be to have one board meeting a year here in, in the UAE. Now, if it's a more active holding company, 
you know, there could be additional, uh, there, there could be more board meetings required in order to, to manage the holding company business, right? They might need to decide, okay, you know, how are we going to vote these shares? Are we going to acquire this interest? Whatever. Um, but the point is, uh, with a holding company, unless it's a large holding company with a lot of activity, you generally wouldn't need a local board of directors here, here in the UAE. If, if you had a, a very active holding company um, that needed to make a lot of board level decisions, you, you really would want that board of directors located here in order to, to uh, qualify under, under the economic substance regulations because they're the ones managing the business, right? Um, but if it's a small holding company that maybe owns you know, shares in a few companies, and, and like I said, it's just collecting the, the money on an annual basis, maybe there's only one board meeting a year that's really required to uh, comply with these economic substance regulations. And I think that there's a lot of structures that don't have, there's a lot of structures like that that don't have a local board of directors, right? The directors are maybe uh, located in several different countries and they meet here in the UAE once a year for a board meeting to discuss the business and, and, and so on and so forth. And that should comply with the economic substance regulations. Well, what I want to know now is how in the hell are these people going to get to the UAE to do a board meeting? I mean, this is going to, this is going to be a, a, a potentially disastrous for those types of structures. And there's a lot of them, right? Like the UAE border due to coronavirus is essentially shut down, right? So you can't really get in here. Uh, it's not so easy to get out of other countries to get anywhere. Um, and it doesn't look like this is going to stop anytime, anytime soon. You know, the, the, the governments keep kind of saying, okay, another two weeks, another two weeks. But by all the estimates that I'm reading, this could very easily uh, be a situation that lasts to the end of the year. I mean, even if the, the UAE, for example, opens up internally, it's not likely that they're going to start ushering in people from other countries immediately because they could be at risk. They could be infected with corona, right? And then bring that here and, and we start the whole cycle all over again, which we don't want to do. So I think that companies really need to start. I think companies that where the board of directors are not located here, but they have a holding company here really need to start thinking about uh, what they're going to do about their board meetings. Um, and because if they don't have those board meetings here, they're not going to be able to meet the economic substance test, which means they're going to fail to meet their economic substance requirements, which potentially could lead to the UAE reporting back to their home jurisdiction uh, that they didn't meet the test and, and which could result in, you know, an audit or investigation disregarding the holding company and allocating those assets to the people directly. We, we don't know. Um, so a couple of ideas uh, that I had, obviously one idea is the shareholders need to replace the board of directors with local directors here. But again, I don't know how effective that's going to be because, you know, the, who knows how active, how much knowledge these appointed directors are going to have. What if you don't know anybody here? If you're just putting nominees on the board of directors, I think that also is not going to meet the economic substance um, requirements. So I think one, if it is possible to get here by the end um, of 2020 uh, in order to do the board meeting, great. If the whole board can't come, I think whoever can come should. The other people can call in. Um, through 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 telephone or video conferencing and attend the meeting here, but at least the meeting would be based here. One of the things that we're recommending, um, you know, to our clients, we we offer, we we offer a corporate secretary service at Esquire Group, and one of the things that we're recommending is that at least uh, the secretary call call the meeting uh, here and have everybody, all the directors, call in, um, so that the meeting at least. Uh, physically took took place here uh, and was hosted here. Uh, I don't know if that's going to hold up or not under the economic substance regulations. I, I hope so. I think given the current pandemic, it should. Um, but anyway, my point was, this is something you need to be thinking about if you have a company in any country with economic substance regulations and it falls under a relative uh, a, a relevant activity. Uh, I, I think this is mostly going to affect uh, holding company businesses um, 
But anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit us up, esquiregroup.com, or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. Peace!